Hello my lovely friends, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new around this neck of the woods, hi, my name is Melissa, or Missa, welcome. I was supposed to have this video up a couple days ago, but honestly I took yesterday off. <laughs> Depression, am I right? But today I felt like I could film, here we are. So, as you can see by the title, I'm playing with one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my entire life. I uh, I can't actually fathom this palette. This is a Glaminatrix Nocturnal palette. Glaminatrix is an indie Australian brand. As a lot of you know, I'm getting more into indie brands and trying to play with them and use them more. And they were doing a PR search a while ago and a heap of people like tagged me in it and then they sent me this palette. They also sent me a couple singles, which I will show you and swatch for you as well because they are the tits. Anyway, as usual with all like palette reviews, I'm going to swatch this whole thing, put my put it on my eyes and then give you my thoughts. So I should probably show you the palette. <laughs> Again, I have done full eyeshadow reviews without holding up the palette. This is the Nocturnal palette. Now, this shade came smashed when it arrived in the post, so it's not actually my heavy fingering of that shade that made it messy. It came smashed but the rest came absolutely fine but obviously I have now used this palette and gotten fallout and stuff everywhere. You see all these shimmers are like dual chromes and it, whatever light you look in it they look completely different. Like it's nuts. Look at this palette. I uh, remember when I first saw it I was just blown away. I just feel like it's so interesting. It's very unique. It's just gorgeous to look at and I'm very excited that it's within my mitts. I don't think it's limited edition, I think the pre-order did sell out but if you do still want this palette I'm pretty sure you can still buy it. Um, but again it is indie brand from Australia and it does cost quite a lot of money to ship it over here. Bear that in mind. Do a group order if you really want it. Anyway let's jump into swatching this bad boy. I have swatched it before, I'll throw those swatches up on screen just now. I swatched it on my stories I'm pretty sure but I'll do like live swatches just now as well but just so you can see it like with my iPhone flash on or flash off, I can't remember how I did it. Just so you can see those but I will of course live swatch right now because honestly I enjoy swatching. Like it gives me joy. Uh, so let's just start. So this first one's called Milky Way and in the pan it looks super pink and on the finger it looks really pink but it's also like greeny blue, I don't know. It's just bizarre. It swatches kind of pink there but I've put this all the way up the centre of my eye and I just see like a green blue shift. I don't really see the pink in it, it's so cool. Um, so that is Milky Way. I'll obviously do a close up. Then we have Night Vision, which is like blue brown, but instead of blue brown, it's like green brown. It's really cool. Like, look, come on. And then we have Witching Hour, which is our first matte to swatch. It doesn't swatch very well. The mattes, they feel quite, I don't know, quite dry, but. They do go on the eye really well, it's just one of those formulas that maybe doesn't blow you away when you swatch it, but actually using it does seem to work really well. One of my favourite shades, Luna, which I had to like avoid using today because I thought everyone's going to think I'm going to use the blues, and I tried not to use all the blues, and tried to do very grunge today rather than like a total Melissa look, so yeah, that's Luna. The shade is so cool. Fog. That swatches phenomenally. It's like a green mustard. It's really unusual. We have Gloom. Again, I used it today. It's like a green toned brown. Then we have Obscurity. I can't believe I'm going to fit this whole palette on one arm. This makes me happy. This shade again is super cool. This is Murky. Just like a matte chartreuse lime. <laughs> then we have Dusk. The shimmers feel like wet, almost like bouncy, chunky, crumbly. They're the strangest texture, I have to say, but that's not a bad thing. It's just an odd 
texture compared to like what I'm used to. And now you'll see when I do it on my eyes, I did find a little bit of a struggle putting it on with a brush. They definitely apply a lot better with a finger. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And then we have Nightfall. These mattes are actually swatching pretty good. I think it's just that purple that maybe didn't swatch that excellent. I have Constellation, which is all sorts of colours. It's like pink, peach, green, brown. It's a really weird one. I would say compared to all the rest of the shimmers, it looks a bit flat and boring, but it, it does have a lot of shift, like in person. And then I was so pleased to see they put a black in the palette called Shadow. And when I tell you this is one of the best black eyeshadows I've ever touched in my life, I am not joking. On the eye, it's even more like shockingly phenomenal. Like, trust me, it may be better than ABH Noir. I don't know yet. Okay, so that is the palette. I'm going to zoom you in quite a bit and see if you can see. See how, like, this shimmer, it looks kind of weird in the swatch. It's just like it's. The formula is just quite strange, but I mean the the pigment it gives off and the like the shift and all that it's all there. It's just kind of a weird formula that I don't really have a lot of experience with. Isn't that such an interesting color story? It's very grungy, I feel, and I'm not usually drawn to grunge, but this palette really was doing a number on my brain for the like weeks that they were like releasing one shade at a time. I was just going nuts for it. What do you think of them? I, uh, I'm i actually quite impressed with this watch, just to be honest. Again, it's an indie brand. This is like a really small, I'm pretty sure again, it's like a one woman show kind of brand. So to put out like shadows of this quality is just excellent. I mean, it's really beautiful. So anyway, that is again, the swatches and uh, you have to let me know your thoughts down below as as you watch them. How did you feel? This palette, I'm going to give it a wee clean and then put it up on my shelf nice and safe. I really like the packaging as well. It's like old school Natasha Denona. I've got eyeshadow primer on it. It's like um, kind of like faux leather with like stitching. It's really nice. So that there is the swatches. Let's jump to future Melissa voicing over me putting it on my eyes. See give you my thoughts as I apply it, see what you think as I apply it. For once, this eye, which I didn't film, is worse than this eye, so I'm quite impressed with myself. So yeah, let's jump into that now, and then I'll see you back here for some thoughts on the Glaminatrix palette. Hello you beautiful people, welcome to Melissa Voices Over. Very late at night, shouldn't be doing it at this time. So obviously I'm starting with the black, you know me, you know how it be. I'm looking at my camera as I'm filming this and all I see is my bum chin. It's really offending me. Uh, throwing the black on, very, very, very good black eyeshadow, happy to report. Uh, exceptional black eyeshadow, to be honest. And I'm just going to buff it out a wee bit, you know, a la people that know what they're doing with makeup. And then it felt natural to go in with Witching Hour next, because it's the second darkest matte within the palette. Yes, within Maybe I made that up. Maybe it's Maybelline. And I'm going all the way around it with the purple. It's gorgeous, but my goodness, it needs built up. Um, I noticed that in the swatch as well. You, you really need to pack it on, pack it on, pack it on. Then I'm going to a gloom, which I read as goblin, just there in my head. It's because I look like a goblin currently. I yeah, uh, wasn't sure was I going to be able to blend this into the purple, but I do feel like it just kind of grunged grunged it all up, gave it a, a real grungy look. The word of the hour is grunge. G-R-U-N-G-E. Then I'm going in with fog. A uh, gorgeous colour. This doesn't need built up as much as the purple does at all, but it doesn't go on bish bash bosh colour. Uh, but you, you do have to build it up, but it is still there. I actually think you could get away with this as a blush on a cheeky day if you wanted to. Uh, love how out of focus this all is and then I'm going in with murky which I always read as matty and matty is quite murky so there we go uh yeah super out of focus love that for me and you and us and professional 
whacking that on here, there and everywhere. Not really bothering at the bottom because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with my lower lash line to be honest. And that's the look. Completely done. Finished. Let's move on with our lives now. I'm going to go and blend this all together. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time. I think this clip in total was like 12 minutes or something of me just blending. This is obviously very, very sped up. Uh, but I don't really mind putting in the time and the effort because makeup's worth it, you know? I enjoy it. I enjoy sitting blending and doing all of that stuff. So I'm just... Yeah, going through each colour as we use them and applying them. Hiya, Saucy. Sausage is here. He's come to say hello. So Daniela told me to use Dusk in the middle. And whilst I could see her vision, I do wish I'd maybe gone in with the bright green or the blue, to be honest, because I feel like this Dusk colour, as really pretty as it is, and you can totally see the duochromeness on camera, I feel. Um, I just feel like it was a bit dark for the look and I should have used something a bit brighter and uh, then I'm using a brush to, to try and get right up close to my cut crease. It doesn't like going on with the brush though, my goodness. And then just back in with a bit of witching hour just to blend the edges um, because it's purple and I put purple, purple shim shim on. And then I'm going to go in with Milky Way and just throw that up the centre because A, Daniela said to do it and B, I wanted to add a bit more brightness to this to the center of this look anyway so I just kind of tapped it on my finger and you can see it's all just the little particles of shimmeriness like it's just phenomenal and then I put it under my brow here as well just because it makes sense a bit more on the other side that's the look we're gonna clean this up and then the lower lash line I decided to keep it pretty simple but a little bit of fun by extending the front of it I was gonna add like some water liners and like add like a pop of neon lime or something but I just wanted to keep it as the palette and then I used a white eye pencil this is an Urban Decay one but just anyone will do and then I popped a bit of that Milky Way shade on top but it just brought it out more it's just it doesn't really look pink on but it kind of does but it's definitely more of like a weird greeny blue shift it's really cool and then it's just use the exact same colors down here um just to, just to blend it out and then that's the new Benefit eyeliner which I used to just make that line look a little bit neater. I did top lash line liner as well, I don't know at what point I put that on and didn't tell you but there's it with the lash line. These are Dose of Lashes, I don't know what style, I can't remember, uh, Daniela sent them to me. They are puby and extravagant and I quite like them actually. Um, but yeah, the eye that I actually filmed Kate, the blend came out way better than the other. I don't know if you just saw that, but for once, like the one I was filming, I think looks better. Um, and they don't quite match the inner corners, but I don't really have even eyes. But overall, I think it is quite good. Like the look in general, I know where I was going with it. I think I could have done it better, but not super bad for my first official play. All my makeup is finished off. Mm, what did I use that's important? My NARS long wear matte the super high coverage foundation I'm wearing an elf blush and NYX silence is golden and then lips are Huda Empress because it's just such a lovely pale nude but still I feel like slightly grungy to go with this eye you know what I mean I'm actually really happy with my eye look overall it's very like grungy and dark and quite sexy do they match entirely no but it's fine I'll photograph it from one side like I always do um let's talk quality as well okay so the shadows all feel very high quality, I will say that. They feel real good. I don't actually have that many complaints apart from in now using the palette and having it in my possession, I feel like there's not enough like mid tones. Like I'm not entirely sure how to work with these like bright blues, but I did test the shadow, the black the purple into this darker blue then into this lighter blue and if I did it, if I spent a lot of time in it, I could blend it all together and make it look really cool. So let me know if you want a second look with this palette, maybe trying more of the blues this time. The mattes actually are really decent. They do go on really well but I feel like you do have to kind of pack them on, blend, pack on, blend, pack on, blend. It's not just like bam in your face pigment apart from the black. Uh, you do have to kind of add and add and add but that's okay. Like having a 
a buildable formula is okay. For me, I definitely prefer Wham Bam Thank You Man Pigment straight off the bat, but if you like a blendable, like buildable formula, you'll probably like this. The shimmers are absolutely stunning. Again, they do not like going on with a brush. Get one of those like silicon applicators. I think that would be excellent for this kind of formula, shimmer formula. I think that would just make it work the absolute tits. But in this Milky Way shade, again, looking at it in the pan, that just looks like a pink, but it's definitely more like a green shift. It's really cool. I love it a lot. And it really adds a bit up the center of the eye look. I'm really pleased to have this in my collection. I don't feel like let down by it or anything. I just feel like it's not... I'll be honest, I don't think it's as good formula-wise as the Blend Bunny Surge or Blends palette. I don't even think it might be as good as my Beauty Bay eyeshadows. I feel like they are more pigmented and easier to blend. But it is a good, good formula and I think if you really wanted this palette, I don't think you would be disappointed in it. You just have to maybe put in a bit more work to get your look out of it than other comparable or even cheaper palettes like I said like Beauty Bay kind of thing. Again let me know if you want a second look with it focusing more on the the blues that this has to offer. Um, I would definitely like to play with it again so let me know if you want to actually watch me do it or if I should just put up a post on Instagram. But yeah that is my first impressions on the Glaminatrix Nocturnal. I'm not sitting here going oh my like when I tried my blend bunnies for the first time I was literally blown away. I don't feel like that with this, but it is very, very beautiful. Oh, before I forget, let me show you the singles. That is the wrong Z palette. So they also sent me these two. So this is one of the new ones called Neptune and oh my goodness. Are you looking at that? And then this one is Cornflower. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. So if the palette maybe doesn't appeal to you, Glaminatrix do do a lot of singles and they are stunning. So let me swatch for you Cornflower. Like I can't get over this. I actually, I was speechless when I swatched these like when I was chatting, video chatting with Daniela when they arrived. And then this is Neptune. <laughs> Again, I was utterly speechless when I was swatching these. This is the cornflower. It is one of the most stunning things I've ever seen in my life. I didn't want to use this in the video because I wanted it to just be the palette. But that's green, pink, peach, blue, purple. That has every shade in it and it is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. And then Neptune is like... <laughs> It's actually disgusting, isn't it? Like, I would sell my soul for these two shades. Like, they are just sickening. I'm trying to get it actually to like unfocus a little bit so you can see all the shift, especially in that cornflower. The Neptune one's more of like a basic blue, but it's not basic in any way, but it's not quite as got as much going on for it as a uh, cornflower does. But yeah, I had to swatch these for you. Look at their single shadows, they are absolutely out of this world. Anyway, yeah, that is my thoughts on the Glaminatrix Nocturnal mostly. The singles are just like an additional bonus of absolute gorgeousness. I am going to piss off. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Have you bought this? Did you pre-order it? Are you tempted? Are you not at all? Like, what are your thoughts? Have you tried it? Let me know. Subscribe if you haven't already. I put out three videos a week and I go what well I go live every Wednesday for my sausages, aka my Patreons, and we have a great time. Telegram group, Facebook group, chats, it's the best. The link to join will be down below as well. So I'll link this palette as well if it is available. On that note, I'm gonna piss off. I hope you all have a lovely day, evening, whatever it is you're doing, and uh, I hope I catch you all on the flip side. Bye!